Victoria Mutual. Proud sponsors of The Silburn Show. We are our members. We are Victoria Mutual. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Silburn Show. And I'm your host, Silburn Sidiel. Joining us today, we have a man who, amongst his many accolades, was one of the three men who was a driving force behind the birth and growth of the hair industry in Britain with the name Daikon Dryden Limited. I'm sure some of you have heard of that name before. Well, he was one of the first Britain's first black millionaires, and his name is Mr. Tony Wade, who is now an author. Have a look at this video. On behalf of the directors and staff of Dyke and Brighton, we welcome you here today. We sincerely hope you'll have a good day show because uh, it is necessary that we should meet like this so that we can learn from one another the things that should be done for care and beauty. Thank you. organizers of the exhibition today can you tell me how you feel it's been going well it's been going very well uh, we're pleased with the attendance from uh, the people they've come from all over the country and abroad to visit the show and um, what what made Dyke and Dryden start the exhibition in the first place well it was just uh, reacting to a need uh, all the customers and users of, users of our products needed somewhere where they could go to find out exactly more and more about the products and uh, all the latest styling techniques. And as well, we wanted to promote the, the manufacturers whose products that we carry, and an exhibition of this type is the best way to do it. Welcome to the show, Mr. Wade. Great to be here. Fantastic. Are you enjoying your Britain trip? Oh, very, very, very well. Fantastic. How long have you been here? Well, I've been here from the 28th of, 28th of June. Okay, fantastic. You know, when before we started, um, when we decided we were going to take have you on the show, we actually put a sort of survey out there to the public to say we're going to have uh, Mr. Wade on the program. And a lot of feedback came back. People were asking, can they come on the show? Can they sit in the audience? Some of them were saying, is he still alive? You know, um, because of the three partners, you're the only one alive. Apparently, is that the case, Mr. That's, Wade? That's correct. Fantastic. So therefore, you are batting the ball. At the same time, yes? Mm -hmm. Now, for those watching that do not know, tell us a little more about your journey, sir, and um, where and who you were from during the time um, in setting up that legacy. Well, um, it, it goes back um, much before. Um, mm -hmm. There was Dyke and Dryden, Tony yes. Wade was before that. I came to the UK in 1954. Yes. And my first job was to wash dishes at Lion's Corner House. Okay. Uh, pushing them in at one end and rolling them down to the other end. So that was a very humble mm -hmm. beginning. My father used to say to me, well, remember where you're going, what you're going to do. And of course, um, you're going looking for opportunities, yes. further your education. And um, I never lost, n never lost what he said. It's been um, my guiding principle yes. ever since I came to the UK. Now, washing dishes yes. was not what I came to do, but he said, you make the best possible use of every opportunity. And that was the first opportunity mm. to earn money. And tell me, um, was, while you said washing dishes wasn't what you wanted to do, but, but you had a clear agenda of what you wanted to do? Yes, then. indeed. And that agenda was to um, be good at my career, what I wanted to do. Yes. One of the things that I did when I was washing dishes, came home at nights and I found myself at uh, evening classes. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, one of the subjects that I studied was um, accountancy. And in that, I found what was my first job. I uh, was working then for um, a very large company, yes. um, a clothing company. They had some 200 men's stores. Mm -hmm. And um, my boss, um, Mr. Lewis Siegel, 
he said to me, Tony, that cash book that you're responsible for, I want to tell you something. That's the most important book in the whole organization. Yes. At the beginning of the week, at the beginning of the week on Monday, at midday, I wanted to know what the balance is in the bank, the amount of money that we have in the mm -hmm. bank. And I never lost um, what he said to me. He wanted to make sure that the thing balanced and I had for him the figures. That was the, and I did, did my best. Yes, in fact, yes. I used to get it right to the penny. Mm -hmm. And the net result was that um, I benefited from what I was doing. It was a very responsible job, naturally. So tell us, how, then how did the, the world meet in with the, your other partners? How did that occur during the process of that time while you were doing the same accounting? Well, here's what happened. Yes. I was so inspired by Louis Siegel. Following in his footsteps is what I decided that I was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, I was going to go into business myself on my own account. So while I was there and doing his work, I was also um, coming up with my own ideas. Yes. And I set up um, a business called Carib Services. Carib Services. Correct. Yes. Carib Services was going to act as a buyer for Caribbean companies mm -hmm. here in the UK. And um, that is exactly what I did. I went to the um, Department of Trade and Industry. Yes, and DTI. I, the, yeah. the DTI. Yeah. I picked up some of the companies that was doing business with Britain. And of course, I immediately got um, uh, a sheet yes. to advertise applying for people who were wanting to take the, 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 the advantage of getting somebody buying from them in the UK. Yes. And it worked. I had my first order from the Bahamas mm -hmm. and um, I executed, got what they wanted. In fact, I can tell you what it was. It was stationary. Yes. Um, got my got my money into the bank and of course I was very happy that that happened. Now my colleagues, uh, Mr. Lendike and Mr. Dudley Dryden, yes. we were friends before they yes. went into business. Mm -hmm. I was so um, satisfied that what I set out to do that it actually worked. So I thought well they're the first person who should know what the yeah. outcome was. So. I marched down to West Korea Road, where, where they were located. Where, where, where in UK was that? Where was that? Well, that North London. North London, okay. Yes. Tottenham. Uh, yes, Tottenham. Your stomping ground. That's my old stomping <laughs> ground. And um, I said, well, hey, boys, I'm going to join you guys mm. in the business world. And here is what. So I showed them what I did and what the end result was. And um, halfway through the conversation, they said to me, Tony, congratulations. And we wondered, Dudley and I wondered whether mm -hmm. you'd be willing to join us mm -hmm. in our business. And I said, not so fast. Yes. <laughs> uh, give me some time to think about it. And then I'll come back to you at a, at a later date. Yes. And this was, of course, uh, about, about two or three weeks later. Yeah. I came back and I said, well, yes, I think that I uh, would be willing to become your partners. Right, right, right. But what we'll have to do, we'll have to change the direction because I don't necessarily like what you're doing. And what was it that they were doing at that time? Well, they were selling um, records. They were importing um, Caribbean records, Jamaican mm -hmm. records. Okay. And they were selling pre-releases. These mm -hmm. were records without any labels. Okay. And they had a constituency of uh, sound systems. Mm -hmm. People wanting sound system, the latest sound and all that. So they had, a, they had a good thing going. Yes. But I spotted that the biggest need was um, hair preparations for our, our ladies. And nobody was doing that. So there was a gap in the market. 
And when you say hair preparation, what, what, what do you mean? Well, what, what type well, of hair? Shampoos, yes. um, shampoos, hairdress, and, mm. and that sort of thing. For me? Could it, well, not, would not, I, would, not, would it be for not, me not, myself? Not, not for you. No, not no, for me. Not for you. Okay, right. But, uh, <laughs> of course, you used to do wigs. You are doing everything. Okay. That um, I thought was the biggest need. And of course, I said, well, provided that you're willing to yes, change direction, yes. that you'll, of course, come out of records mm -hmm. and get into wigs and cosmetics, then I would happily join. Well, you know, the, the thing about it is that um, the, the hair industry, I mean, the Afro hair industry, which um, you guys were the pioneers for. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions that sometimes people talk about is that it, it is not the same sort of ownership which is in that realm anymore. It is now owned by Asians, which you are the pioneer for. Now, what would you say was the catalyst factor that created the shift? You mean that Asian have yeah. um, the, the, the larger share? Yeah. Well, because uh, it's our own fault, um, mm. black um, people's fault. The Asians saw something that was good. Right. In fact, I used to supply them. Well, you started it. Yes. But I was supplying them. They were coming to me and buying all the stuff we had. Right. And in fact, buying um, the largest quantities. Mm. You see, what um, we mustn't forget yes. is that um, it, our business is market driven. And if you are smart enough, to provide what people want, then of course they would go and get it from wherever they wanted. Yes. The, our colleagues, and I say our colleagues, mm. I'm talking our, um, our, our people, yes. um, people, that they have the same opportunities as the Asian people have. Yes. But they didn't take the opportunities. When the time came around and Len and Dudley decided that they wanted to sell, Dudley was literally going around and begging these people and said, well, look, I've spent so much time, well, the best part of my life here mm -hmm. in selling, and I would like to get out of it. I want some of the young people to buy our interest. Some of the Caribbean um, yes. black and minority. I think, yes, yeah. some of, and of course, we couldn't get anybody to, well, to do, sell do, do, to. do you think it was because um, you weren't like the banks weren't supplying uh, persons with loans that the, or wasn't that drive, wasn't that interest was there, or was it that there was no resources there for our people to actually take over what you had, well, the legacy rather? If you see something that you want yes. and you want it um, badly, badly, then you'll find a way of getting the money. Right, right, right. I mean, when we started, we didn't have the money that we wanted, mm -hmm. but what we did, we found a way of getting um, money. Lots of it came from our relations and friends. Yes. So what we were doing, and we want X pounds from you. And of course we got it. We pay them back, of course. Because I understand you guys started with 2,000 pounds, if anything like that. Well. Well, as a seed, the seed funds, if anything. The, the seed funding was, mm. was more than 2,000 okay. pounds. Yeah. It was significantly more than 2,000 mm. pounds. And of course, at 82, I can't remember pound for pound. <laughs> Because I think there was a bunch of you guys um, that your partners pulled together, and uh, and during the course of the time when they were when when they were supposed to come and to put the cash down. Well, <laughs> yes. Well, I'll, I'll give you the story exactly. <laughs> yeah, let was. me know exactly what that meant. Because yeah. I've already told you that I wasn't in it, but I went to say, well, you know, I was so pleased with what they were doing. Yes. And I felt well, that's the direction that I want to go in. Yeah. Len and Dudley approached their friends and so they wanted um, them to have part of what they were doing. Yes. There was five people all together. And on the day that they were asking for money on the table, none mm -hmm. of these five people turned up. So yeah. they were on their own. Wow, wow, wow. So that, of course, tells you something. There is, the, in the first place, a question of mistrust. Mm -hmm. there, there, there was mistrust. And um, that, in the first place, and of course, um, our people too were also ri ri were not risk aware. They um, didn't understand what mm -hmm. it is that if you want to do something and you want to um, succeed, mm -hmm. 
then you're going to take. I'm going to come. I'm, I'm going to come back to that point about our people and the risk taking. Because one of the one of the reasons why I really wanted you on the show was about trying to get some sort of nugget from you, something from that time, that era. What was it then that you had that is needed now? But we'll touch on that later. But one of the questions is, uh, for those who would say you have failed in leaving a profound and obvious legacy, what would you say to them? Because people are saying that one, one of the things, um, is I came in this country recently, just 92, and, uh, and one of the things we always hear is that we're not leaving things for our children, children, children. And I recall there was a, a gentleman with a bakery who wanted to get rid of his bakery and, and to retire, but his son wasn't interested again. And I think it was some Asian guys who actually capitalized on it. So what would you say then about the fact that the legacy is not there, or is it there? You yes. tell well, me. the legacy yes. is there. It is there. When we started, there was nothing. Right. You go everywhere the length and breadth of the UK, mm. and you will find you will see the legacy that Dyke and Dryden has left. Yes, and it's in several ways. It's in books. I, I got into writing, and of course my right. books are there. We'll uh, talk about that later. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. we'll talk about that later. But there is lega. There's a legacy there. Mm -hmm. You could go into the la public libraries, and you would read the magazines. Yes. Or whatever, whatever ha have you. And there's a collection of the legacy that is being left. Right. You go anywhere in Britain and you're wanting to talk about mm. uh, black hair care or black cosmetics. And the first name will come up, uh, Dyke and Ryan. So therefore, even though it is maybe in the hands of others, mm -hmm. but the, you're saying the seed mm -hmm. has been sown, and as a result of that, it is still flourishing, albeit in other hands well again as i said earlier mm. on yes that why we don't have more people in ownership mm -hmm. is really as a result of our fault so we can't blame people yes um for mm. we the time came when we said well it's time you uh, throw in the towel to call it a day yes we couldn't go on forever so the young people had to come in and you, you made a point which I will just enlarge on. Yes. Now, even our children yes. didn't, didn't want to come in. Uh, Mr. Dryden wanted to give his, his shares to his children. Yes. Well, they didn't want to know. Mr. Dyke as well, they didn't want to know. My children were too young mm -hmm. um, to, to get involved. Right. But um, so, you know, it's something really where... Um, our youth did not um, tap into. Did not tap into. They had every opportunity to. Yes. But they didn't. Uh, well, that's for fact. That's very interesting. Um, we, we had put out, as I said, uh, a, a sort of feeler out for feedback from the, the public uh, leading up to this interview. And one of the questions that they would like to hear answered, the feedback we received was that the provision of Afro Caribbean products, especially natural products, is still limited and compared to Caucasian and Asian products often marked up in prices. However, Afro-Caribbean make up a considerable number of our population here in the UK. Mm -hmm. you know? So the question is, what does that say for Britain and how far we have come as a country since you were in industry? Well, we have the same opportunity that yeah. the other people who are providing the things have. Yes. It's a question, if we don't take it, Nobody will do it for us. We've got to do it for ourselves. So, so, I'm, well, so what I'm capturing from you, sir, is everything is in our hands. Yes. And, but then, years ago, there was something else. What was it then that propelled you? Because at that time, you never had the banks pushing that much. You never had the apprentice program. You never had the government throwing money at, I mean, today, if you were at that age, the government would be throwing money at you through the Princess Trust program, would throw money at you as apprenticeship, apprentice to really go forth. You never had that then. We, we, we didn't have it at the beginning. Yes. No, we didn't have it. But we saw that there was a need. Yes. And fulfilling that need really depend on our entrepreneurship. Yes. Depends on what we do. Mm -hmm. And that was, it, it's tougher now, 
than when we were out there trying to carve out mm. a marketplace. It's tougher now th in that time. So the question really is that um, we have to move with the times. Yes. We've got to get involved and make one of my favorite phrases, make our presence felt. That right. is the key. You've got to make your presence felt. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, that is a key point to take a break on where he said, Mr. Drag said, make our presence felt. <laughs> Praise Dyke and Dryden Limited, which has been in the forefront of the establishment of black businesses in London. But it is not only in business that Mr. Len Dyke and Mr. Dudley Dryden have served the community. They were both active members of the Standing Conference of West Indian Organizations. And in fact, Len was a period its chairman. And together, they have built this business from one shop to several. They are the largest black hair and cosmetic company, and also contributors to the continent. Well, what an achievement. I have to congratulate the boys. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is my greatest pleasure to declare Britain's first international exhibition for Afro Hair and Beauty Open. Lord Pitt joins me in wishing it every success. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on part one of this exclusive interview with Tony Wade. Next week we'll have the final segment of the interview and we look forward to you joining us on The Silburn Show. Sponsors of the Silburn Show. We are our members. We are Victoria Mutual. <laughs>